10 games for the PlayStation 4 worth buying and 5 worth avoiding. A video that I did already and went down pretty well. You guys seem to enjoy my opinions and the games that I picked. When I made that last video, I had hundreds of you telling me that there are games that I missed. So this list is something a little different. This list is games picked by you guys. Games that I had to go out and buy or borrow to play for the first time and decide for myself if they actually were worth it or if... I think a lot of you might have been trolling me with a couple of them. I ended up playing some games that are on this list and they didn't make it to the worth it column. One thing to note is all of these games are exclusive to the PlayStation 4, meaning if you want to play them, you got to play them on PlayStation 4. I feel like that's a given for a list like this. But without further ado, here is another top 10 list of games worth buying and playing on the PlayStation 4. And then another five that you should definitely not play like I had to. And coming in at number one is the game that almost everyone in the comment section seemed to have an issue with the fact that I missed in the last video, and that is Nier Automata. I hope I pronounced that right. Nier Automata is definitely a game that I agree deserves to be on a worth it list. I checked this game out since I made that last video, and I gotta say, this is one of the, as far as the story goes, one of the weirdest and most interesting stories I've experienced in an RPG. But it's not just an RPG, it's an RPG mixed with a shoot 'em up, mixed with a hack and slash. There's a lot of different things going on in this game. Soundtrack is something that caught me off guard right away. This is an amazing soundtrack in this game. It's amazing gameplay. There's a lot of things going on that's really fast paced, but it controls really well and it's super addictive. With over 30 hours of gameplay in this game, I can definitely see why y'all was screaming at me to throw it on the list. Nier Automata is a really, really fun RPG mixed with a bunch of other genres that is definitely worth picking up on the PlayStation 4. Next up, we have Nio, 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 <laughs> Nio. If you love Dark Souls, if you are one of those people with an unhealthy addiction to Dark Souls, I don't have that addiction, which is why I, I skipped out on this game until now. This is definitely a game that you'll enjoy. I, and I hope I'm not offending anyone by comparing these games, but as someone who played a few hours of Dark Souls and several hours of Neo 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 now before making this review, in my experience, they are very similar. But from what I experienced in my fairly limited time playing them is that this game has a lot of its own advantages. For example, I much prefer the story in this game. It wasn't an incredible story, it's not a perfect story, but it definitely enhanced the experience, definitely made the game more enjoyable somehow. I didn't have a, a deep connection with the story, but it, it definitely had a lot of personality in it that made me want to keep playing. When I think about these kind of games, I think about difficult gameplay more than an interesting story. So having an interesting story on top is like cherry on the cupcake. Obviously, if you've played a game like this before, you'll know that the gameplay definitely has a steep learning curve. It's very difficult. You can't just go around hacking and slashing and expect to come out on top. It takes a lot of practice, which definitely adds into its total 40 hours of gameplay. First up for a game not worth buying, and again, these are really f just just for fun, just to look at. Maybe the worst one on the list, and we're gonna get it out of the way first. Orc Slayer. It's just ugly. I never like using the word uninspired because I don't know, that just seems like a cop out when it comes to reviewing something. But if there is ever a game that's uninspired, it's this game. It brings nothing new to the first person shooter genre. It's I could I would literally recommend playing almost any other first person shooter. I could recommend playing Walking Dead Survival Instinct before I could recommend playing this. There's nothing I can say about it. There's nothing positive. It looks terrible. Walking Dead, I can be like, hey, well, you know, it's voiced by the guy that played Daryl and the guy that played Merle. And honestly, it's kind of fun to shoot zombies in the head with the crossbow, pull the, the, the crossbow arrow out and then shoot him again, or just shoot him in the stomach a thousand times and then pull him out. That's actually pretty fun. Orc Slayer is Orc Slayer and I don't recommend it. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is worth buying. There's two reasons why this game's on the list. One, it wasn't out before I made the last video, so I couldn't put it on the last one. And two, I wanted to talk about this game since it came out, but I didn't want to do a, a, a review on it, so here's here's my chance, I guess. When it comes down to it, when, when you'll know why it's worth it. It's, it's cheaper than a full price retail brand new game, and it's three games in one. And granted, they're older games that have been remastered, but they did a really great job at remastering them. They look fantastic. And while I feel like the gameplay is different somehow, it's, I, I mean, some people swear that it isn't, some people swear that it is. I just feel like I die way more in different places than I did when I was a kid. If you've played it, you might know where I'm coming from. It seems harder, but it also seems like it's not my fault that it's harder. It seems like I'm fighting the game half of the time. But beyond that, you're getting three games for less than the price of one, and they're really, really fantastic games. 
games. And whether you played them back in the day or it's your first time playing them, it, it, it's Crash Bandicoot. I mean, I don't really even have to justify it. Of course, it's worth buying and a lot of people already know that because it's selling. It's selling pretty well. Now another game for worth it that was screamed at me in the comment section of the last video was Kingdom Hearts Remix for PlayStation 4, which has Kingdom Hearts Remixes 1 and 2 for PS3 in one, but it has all six games and the loading screens are quicker and it's just the definitive way to play all these games. And yeah, in the same sense that Crash Bandicoot was worth it because of three games, this is definitely worth it because it has six. And Kingdom Hearts games, they are long ass games. It'll take you a long time to power through all six of those. Really high quality games. The story is, I don't, I don't know if it's worth playing more for the gameplay or the story because both are absolutely fantastic and I can't wait for Kingdom Hearts 3. This, this, this is worth it. The reason why I didn't put it on the last one is because it goes without saying that this is worth it. It's definitely worth it. Pick it up. Especially if you didn't pick up the remixes on the previous console because, I mean, I don't know what there's so there's so many remasters these days, but this is definitely one worth picking up. Now, Orc Slayer was probably the worst one on the list, and this one's probably the best one. It's top tier, not worth it for me, and that is Knack. And I'm sure this is gonna go maybe 50-50 with a lot of you out there because a lot of people do enjoy it or find the merit in the game. For me personally, I was just disappointed. And it wasn't the hype behind the game. It wasn't the fact that it it, it was hyped up to be something really fun and then it wasn't, which definitely did happen and did play into how much I enjoyed it, but it was just the look and feel of the game got me excited. I love that kind of style, like a, like a mascot, like an adorable mascot that I kind of want to get behind this platformer and play something like, not like Spyro or like Crash Bandicoot or like Sonic or like Mario, but it's that kind of thing where it made me feel like I was about to go on some kind of adventure with this cool mascot with maybe some fun gameplay and platforming elements. And it didn't really deliver on any of that. Again, I don't like using the word uninspired, but it didn't bring anything new to the platformer table. It does have one saving grace for me and that's that it was pretty fun to control and beat up enemies and it, it really was satisfying it was just super repetitive it was that same satisfying fighting again and again and again and again and by the end of it it just becomes a lot less satisfying it needed to evolve throughout the game and it never really did does that mean if you find the game for five bucks you shouldn't pick it up and try it Ah, uh, that's really up to you. You'll probably get $5 of fun out of it for sure, but there are definitely games about, about 5 bucks for the PlayStation 4 that you'll have more fun with. There's so many games to play, and I wouldn't play Nag over so many others. Another one that got screamed at me in the comment section, and that was Journey. Again, Journey is really short, but I agree, it's definitely a must play. You just download it and enjoy it. It's a gorgeous game. It's one of them games that you'll just, you, you'll, you'll be engrossed in it the entire time you play it, and you'll be thinking about it for a few days after, and it'll always resonate resonate with you and it'll be one that you'll you'll be thankful that you played it's the kind of game that you get at the end and you're like I'm glad I played that game and that's all I want to share about that one not worth it we have basement crawl this one's bad too honestly it's like a dark bomber man like a dark gritty bomber man it would have been such a cool concept but it's just it's ugly it's really ugly it's a mess to play the controls really aren't that great it handles bad the online functionality is terrible there's so much lag so in the multiplayer game and you can't play online you're, you're really you're at the point where you need to play with friends and if you're at that point please just play like Bomberman, play actual Bomberman, it's so much better. Play Super Bomberman R to get it on Switch or just play Bomberman 64. You'll have a lot more fun than playing this game. It's, it, it looks, from the outside looking in, it looks like a cool game though. Like the, the, the way it was marketed almost looks like an outcast kind of horror thriller game. Be the kind of game that I'd be like, I wish I could play that, but I'm too scared because that's how I am with all those kind of games. It's not, it's, it's Bomberman, but 50 Shades of Grey Darker. And it's, it's an unfinished game. And again, you're better off playing actual bomber man there's no reason to play this terrible version so don't i don't want to keep repeating myself but another game that i was yelled at about is last guardian the reason why i didn't put it on the last list is because i'm 50 50 on it i don't think it's worth full retail but it's definitely worth picking up probably below 30. And the reason why I feel like it's worth picking up is purely for the story. Whereas where I kind of explained with no, no, Noir, Noir, that the gameplay is so fun that having an interesting story spliced in between that really wasn't that fantastic, but it helped move the game along and added something to it for sure. This is kind of the opposite of that. The story that's told by the world around you and by the connection that you have with this creature and the, the connection he, he and the creature has is so engrossing. It makes you want to keep playing and keep being a part of the world. It makes you not want to put it down. And the gameplay is sort of just there to help you 
move along the game so you can get to know these characters more or feel more connected to the characters. But it's definitely an experience at the end of the day. It's something that I would recommend experiencing. It's a game that I would recommend experiencing. I did enjoy it, 100%, I did enjoy it. Was it perfect? No, it's kind of short, it's 12 hours. I was kind of hoping for a little better out of the game, but it's not a game that I would pass up on. It's definitely a game that's, that's worth playing and worth buying for cheap, for like half price or less. The, I swear this is the last of the remastered collections. They do belong on this list because they are so worth it. The next game is the Uncharted Collection, but I'm also going to slot it in with Uncharted 4 and make it a double feature. Now the Uncharted Collection goes without saying, it's three fantastic games that's like 20 bucks now. You can't beat that, it's definitely worth the price, it's the definitive way to play the games, goes without saying. On the other hand, with Uncharted 4, I would like to mention that because it got packaged in with the Pro system, if you go to like local game stores, like EB Games and GameStop still sell it for a decent amount. Like I think GameStop has pre-owned for 20, which is a great deal and definitely 100%. New, I think it's 40. But if you go to any like secondhand uh, game store, mom and pop type store, they have so many of these in stock because people bought the pro, played the game, and then they were done with it. They didn't really want it in the first place, or they just the kind of person that trades it in. But so many people had this game for free and they gave it away and they sold it back to a game store. But they have so many. Every game store I go into these days have so many Uncharted 4s on the shelf. You can get them for 5, 10, 15 bucks. They're honestly getting that cheap. I've seen them that cheap. And that is so worth it. It's only like an eight hour game, but even for 20 bucks pre-owned at GameStop, I mean, it's Naughty Dog, so it's, I mean, yeah. You know, it's definitely going to be worth it, but it is a really enjoyable game. The story is fantastic. It wraps up the Uncharted series with Drake so perfectly. It's, it's a must play, especially if you've played any of the other games or you're looking for an exclusive for the PlayStation 4. It's, it's up there. There's Horizon, Uncharted, other games. <laughs> It's worth buying. I do love the Uncharted games. I'm a big fan. I'm not a big SingStar guy, but apparently SingStar Ultimate Party is a game to avoid. I didn't know this, but it is apparently the worst SingStar game that has ever been made. The microphone doesn't work half the time. It cuts in and out if you can even get it to connect ever. They took out a ton of modes that were in every other SingStar game and made it just the most basic, you just sing to music game that there is. And apparently it's the worst SingStar. I don't think anyone watching this video even probably has any interest in SingStar, but I, I was running out of terrible games, really is what it came down to. If I sang, would it make up for the fact that I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel? What could I sing to make up for it? My gift is my song, and then this one's for you. And you can tell everybody that this list of PlayStation games, there's 10 that are worth buying and five you should avoid. <laughs> The last game I'm going to recommend you guys checking out is a game that I actually really like the look of, and it's Alienation. It's an intense shooter RPG, and honestly, it's visually stunning. When I first looked at the game, I don't know why, I kind of just glanced over it and didn't really pay attention to it, but it's got a mix of realistic environments, but mixed with like Tron lasers and bullets flying everywhere. There are so many different kinds of enemies to kill in this game, so it never really feels like it gets too repetitive. Plus, it is relatively short, but every time you beat it, it gets harder, and there's more challenges that get added to it. There's PvP modes, there's four player, you can play four players, which is really cool. There's not really many, unless I'm just not really paying attention to it anymore, it's hard to find great multiplayer games, and this is definitely one that I would recommend sitting down and playing with some friends. There's a ton of replayability, it's not too expensive. Grab a couple friends and play Alienation. It's, it's really fun, the controls are super tight. And if I can throw a last bonus game on this list just because I'm here, <clears throat> Rezo Gun's really fun too. It's like a shoot 'em up cut type game, but it's like on a cylinder. It's really unique and different. The visuals aren't my favorite for this one, but it's really fun and fast paced and you have to keep moving or you will die. That's another fun one worth picking up. I think we're at like 12 now technically, but. Last for games not worth buying, we have Fluster Clock. In applied chickenizing technologies, and it is your job to go get those chickens. I, I mean, the name is one reason not to play. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just don't. Just. If any of that looked appealing to you, I don't know, I'm, I'm not touching that one. In the last video, I brought the Order 1886 to the table and I kind of put it in a bracket of, 
is it worth it? Is it not worth it? And I decided in the end, I don't even remember what I decided because I bounced back half the time. This time I'm going to bring Killzone to the table. Is Killzone for the PlayStation 4 worth buying? It's like five bucks now. It's not an amazing game. It, I, I found it really boring, but a lot of people thought it was a lot of fun, but it's so cheap. It's like five dollars. It's almost nothing. And for its quality, it's definitely worth five dollars, I think think but I don't want to put it into a bracket this time I'm gonna leave it up to you guys cast your vote down below with where Killzone Shadowfall should fall Sh should fall <laughs> is it worth it or is it not I'm gonna pin my own comment to the top of the page and keep you guys updated with who's winning so we can treat that as a little mini game in this video have a look and see where it's landing right now as you're watching this I'm actually interested to see what you guys pick for that so guys there we go 10 more PlayStation 4 games picked by you guys that are worth playing and five that I was either being trolled or I don't I don't know what when it came to those games that are definitely not worth playing. But as always, what do you guys think? Let me know down below if you disagree with any of my opinions or if you have even more that you want to add to it, maybe a future list. Remember to hit like on this video. Please be subscribed because ya know that I love it and we become best friends when you do. So they, so why wouldn't you want to? Hit my little, touch my little bell, touch the little bell that I have. And I don't know guys, uh, these, these videos really take it out of me. They take me like an hour to film. I'm not even kidding. This took me an hour to film. I got to, plus I have to do so much research and all of them. I'm exhausted. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> that was weird. I still have to finish Horizon. Mm.